Well, hello, my friends. Blessing and peace on you in the mighty name of King Jesus. Troy Brewer here coming at you strong from the studios here at Open Door Church. Guys, welcome, my friends, to The Prophetic Life. And friends, I'm going to share this across every single platform we have today because I have a special guest by the name of Joseph Z. And friends, I just had to share this with everybody, not just to the several thousand people that have signed up for The Prophetic Life, but I want to share it with all of our people on all of our platforms all over the world because, man, you got to know this brother. Now, this guy has recently become a good friend of mine. And today we're going to talk about some far out stuff. We're going to talk about some weirdo stuff. We're going to talk about God speaking through the headlines. What should we expect in the year 2020, uh, 2024? What, uh, what is God speaking prophetically for the destiny of our nation through Roe v. Wade? I'm going to be, we might actually get into Nephilim. We might actually talk about AI. Get ready. It's going to be a prophetic trip. Now, if you're somebody who is like, man, I like this kind of stuff. Well, then you know what? You should join us all the time on ODX.TV. And I also just have to throw this out there. Hey, man, would you please like this? Would you please share this? Would you please let people know? You know, actually become a media missionary and share this across every single platform that you have and help us get the defiant what did I say? I said this phrase earlier, defiant hope in your face, hope in the love of God and in King Jesus. Help us get that out there. Like, share, be a media missionary. Also, too, if you'll write down, hey, I'm watching from so-and-so. I'm watching from here. I went, guys, we love those comments. And we have people, we typically have about 40 nations join us. And that's a really big deal. And it's like, man, my friends in Australia, my friends in South America, my friends in Uganda, oh my gosh, my friends in South Africa, my, all my Canadian friends, all my peeps. Hey, go ahead and sign up and do that for me. Guys, joining me from a di from directly across the room is a lovely and gracious Miss Connie. Hello, Miss Connie. How are you today? I'm good, Pastor Troy. How about you? Well, I'm doing great. I'm so excited about our show today with uh, Brother Joseph Z. I mean, the brother, hey, we're, I, you know, so he actually just interviewed me, right? And you know that you know that he did that, and he is so gracious, and he is so respectful, and he's so professional, and it's not going to be reciprocal. I'm just going to talk about really weird stuff, and it's not really fair. I'm going to ask him. Hey, man, you want to talk aliens? Let's talk aliens. You want to? Let's talk. I want to talk aliens. Let's go. But we're going to talk about some next level stuff today that is so much fun. And he just got through doing this very professional interview with me. I kind of feel sorry for him. No, this is good. This gives you both a chance to kind of let loose and talk about that weird stuff that everybody has questions about, but don't always know what to ask or where to find this. So it's really awesome that this is going to be across all platforms. I'm really excited. Okay, well, right on. So what I need to tell everybody before we get started here, is there anything in particular? I need yes, to tell sir. Them? We want to keep it fresh in everyone's minds that, hey, our New Beginnings 24 conference is coming up. Wow. Which is awesome because you're going to be going into more detail about your 5784 word in the 2024 year that's coming up. I know that we've already entered into the 5784 with Rosh Hashanah and the Jewish New Year, and then we're coming into the Gregorian New Year with 2024. Super exciting. You can sign up on opendoorexperience.com slash events. You can also go to odx.tv, which is our media platform for all things Troy Brewer, and you can sign up there, grab tickets. And you'll also see that there's going to be some prophetic round table. There's going to be a star party. And there is also going to be an ODX gathering. So if you didn't make it out to the new, not the new beginnings, but if you didn't make it out to our ODX weekend, this would be the perfect time for you to come out, love on us, let us love on you, see you face to face. And just meet your brothers and sisters here in the prophetic life. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Ladybug. Guys, joining me all the way from the state of Colorado is my very good friend, Brother Joseph Z. Hey, man. Hey, man. I'm so happy to be with you, Troy. I love your program already. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? We should actually have been filming a while ago when we were talking about all this weirdness. I, I know because you really don't know the you don't know the weird side of me. Everybody only knows. Uh, I, I don't. Okay, so it's 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 a strange thing with me because uh, some people know me as Pastor Troy, right? Some mm -hmm. people know me as the prophetic guy, Troy. Right. You know, the numbers right. guy or the star sure. guy or whatever. Yeah. Most people now know me as the rescuer, Troy. 
But yeah. I want to tell you, a lot of people know me as Rancher Troy, right? Cowboy <laughs> Troy. And I, I'm all those things. But I want to tell you, there is Weirdo Troy. And today, <laughs> I've been like Weirdo Troy. I get Weirdo <laughs> Troy. I did this you nice program with you. We did this great program, and I'm all pretty. I know. And put it was together. so professional. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> It okay. was so straight laced and it was legit. <laughs> you know, I have a good friend of mine named Darren Stott and he's the pastor of Seattle Revival Center. Awesome. And he he did this live thing one time and I, I didn't know him. And we sit down on his stage and he's like this great interviewer and he's got a whole crowd full of people. And, you know, I got this book called Numbers That Preach. And I thought he was going to talk to me about prophetic numbers. I got a book that's called Looking Up and it's about how God speaks through constellations and how the heavens declare the glory of God. And I'm like, got this next level prophetic game, right? And I'm going to bring it. And it's kind of a hoity-toity setting. So I'm just <laughs> sitting there and he says, and we're live and we're in front of a live crowd and I'm on stage. And he says, Pastor Troy. I said, yes. And he said, aliens, let's talk aliens. And I nearly Bro. fell out of my chair. I was like, really? I love it. And so... I was like, okay, you want to go there? And it's one of my favorite interviews we've ever done. It was two hours long. Oh, man. And uh, you can find it at odx.tv. It's me and Pastor Darren Stott. It is a great interview. So I would like to kind of do that to you today. Let's go. <laughs> let's okay. Go. So let's, I would like to start right there. Can okay. we start right there? Let's start okay, there. Okay, because a right, lot of people – Do you, so are you somebody – that um, in your ministry and in your prophetic ministry, when people are like, hey, where do you put the whole alien category? Because obviously uh -huh. there's all kinds of stuff going on today. What do you have to say about that? I talk about it all the time, actually, Troy. I think aliens or UFOs more particularly, and we can get into the alien space with that. But dealing with UFOs, I think it's one of three things or a combination. I think it's advanced tech. I think it could be what they call Project Blue Beam, where they blast stuff up into the air and they, they trick people for a greater uh, deception and project, you know, stuff into people's ears that they can say, oh, this is your Messiah. It's a UFO and it can talk to you. That's one thing. Then thirdly, I believe it's very legitimate. I think there's real stuff and it's not what people think, uh, you know, aliens from other planets, vessels from other planets. I think it's interdimensional demonic activity that may have fallen angel technology involved, or maybe it's strictly demons. But either way, I think that's what we're seeing. One of those three or a combination of. That's what I think, just as a quick header, header you know, coming out. That, no, it was so. great. I totally agree with you 10,000%. I would yeah. also add an amendment to that as well, that when it comes to the legit thing, the third category, oh, yeah. wait, wait a minute. So you're saying, Troy, that there are the, yeah, yeah, there, there are things. Absolutely. And, and I think many times they are a hybrid technology, an advanced technology and a hybrid technology between something supernatural and something natural. And there is a yes. nefarious collaboration that has taken place. Come on, Troy. Yes. And the reason that okay. is, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Collaboration. Well, when we're looking at everything that they began to do, you and I both know rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, right? And you know, mm -hmm. we're talking yes. off camera a little bit about that. So rebellion is unauthorized access to authority or to a space. When it's equal to witchcraft, rebellion is unauthorized access from God to the realm of the spirit. So when people are stepping or venturing into the realm of the spirit as free moral agents or human beings that give permission, because we give permission to light or darkness from the realm of the spirit. It is my opinion that darkness or light can't just manifest on its own free will from the, the spirit realm. It has to be given permission. So witchcraft is those that venture in like the Tower of Babel. They built up this huge thing, opened up the heavens, I believe, and allowed nefarious activity to come into the natural God had to stop it. I believe we're in the age where because of this type of behavior with wicked scientific uh, studies, you know, all these crazy things they're allowing. That's why we're seeing so much, not only in the culture, but I believe also that's why we're seeing this wicked merging of mankind's free moral agency and supernatural evil, which is in the form of UFOs, signs and wonders in the heavens, allowing these things to get more and more authority, even on a scientific level, which is where we get into the Hadron Collider and CERN and all that mess. But I think that's part of what's going yeah. on. 
you know, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the return of King Jesus, right? Come and on, so Troy. what was going on, you know, during the days of Noah, you know, up until the flood, what was going on was there was a collaboration between human beings and a collaboration between demonic, what you and I would call demonic forces, little G gods yes. that uh, had fallen. And they actually gave them technology. They gave them advancement in warfare. They gave them all kinds of things. There was a, this whole Nephilim sex magic thing that was going Ooh. on and was even, yeah. even was going on all the way even after the flood and it says yeah. in genesis 6 and in those days and afterward that's it and afterwards so talking about the flood it was talking about that the uh, sons of god looked upon the daughters of men and talk about and there were giants in those days and there were men of renown in those days and yeah. they're always offering a tech advantage over everybody else so while everybody else is in the copper age they were, uh, these guys are in the iron age and that was wow. also true among the philistines who partnered with the nephilim and they had nephilim giants among them and they had the nephilim gene inside of them yep. am i needing a new microphone you want to bring me a new mic no, i hear just, you well troy Okay. All right. Um, okay. Right on. Sorry about that. And uh, thank you. Thank you, buddy. And and uh, and then they, of course, they were in the Iron Age when Israel was in um, the Copper Age. And it's Man. like, okay, it's like, whoa, they had they had a technical they had a technical advantage over them, but it came from it came from the whole Og thing, the whole uh, uh, the, the the kings of Bashan. It came from all of that kind of mess. And uh, there's a great delusion that is involved in it. And today we're so. looking at this hybrid of tech and human beings, and there's a great delusion that is also involved in it. I think you're right, Troy, because when you're talking about, you know, going back to that statement about witchcraft and the way people have done this all throughout history, I like how you just summarized that. That, that gave me insights I've not thought about before. But going towards even the days of Noah that Jesus spoke about, it'll be like the days of Noah. I believe there's a whole new retrofit, so to speak, of that type of behavior, the Nephilim activity, the stuff that's manifesting. And I believe it's coming, a lot of it, through science. I believe it's coming through transhumanism. It's coming through these yes. experimental things they're doing. It starts out with, you know, uh, uh, what is it, uh, trans transgenders. I believe that's it's right. going all the way to transhumanism. And, um, right. Then it goes into transgression. Just want yeah. to tell you that it leads to the transgression, which is the defilement of the creation of God in such a way that you are no Ooh. longer a redeemable person. That's it. That you're no longer redeemable because you're no That's longer it. a part of the human race or the descendants of Adam. You're a, you're a descendant of something else. Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's oh. the mark of the beast. And that's what Come I think. On, so. Come on, Troy. I think so. <laughs> well, I think it's going cool. there. Yeah, I think it's true. You know, you were mentioning something here, and this that's why we're seeing this crazy stuff. And you know the culture is hungry for it. You made a couple comments even as we were starting this out. Uh, one is about you see these crazy entities like Bigfoot, right? You were talking about Bigfoot a little bit. And Bigfoot, I believe, is all a part of that mixed mess that is both Nephilim. It's uh, you know going from interdimensional issues. I think that's why it can disappear. But you gave me an insight on Bigfoot. Can you help me a little further? What was your thought on that? Because you really said something. Oh, cool. man. we got to go there. Huh? Man, well, I guess so. Mind. I want to know what Sasquatch Watch is. Come on. <laughs> Come on, brother. Okay. Well, so yeah. I... Here's the deal. It's it's like what Dr. Michael Heiser used to say. He says, you know what? If 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 a hundred thousand people throughout the century say that they saw Bigfoot, if just one of them is telling the truth, it busts the entire paradigm of how we think about things. And I I I don't know exactly what that is, but I know the category it falls into. Okay, and so. I don't think that everybody is lying when they say that they've seen these things and had these encounters and they have these experiences. I don't think that they're liars. I just right. don't. I think there yeah. probably are some liars among them, but I don't think that it's I don't think it's all baloney. I also do not think for one second that what Bigfoot would be is some big giant 10 foot tall ape that's really good at staying hid. <laughs> that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. That, that, that is see. not the deal. If it's interdimensional, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense to me that it slips in and out. And and a lot of people have actually said that, that they've seen it phase in and phase out, that it was there and then it was gone and it was there and then it was gone. But I think 
more than that. I think that when it comes to next level Luciferianism, when it comes to next level witchcraft, when it comes to the Luciferian globalist agenda, that there are actually supernatural and natural and hybrid ways that they, uh, things that they use as avatars for yeah. astral projection and moving from one place in the world to another part, part of the world. Right. Now like, whoa, 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 what are you talking about? Okay, so the reality is, is that whenever you, whenever you hear like Bigfoot stories, what you hear is, hey, I saw a big hairy ape, but what they don't report is all the supernatural activity that happens with it. Like a guy will be sitting there in a deer stand and all of a sudden he has in his mind, he's looking through somebody else's eyes at him. And then oh, he looks over and then he sees the thing. Wow. Or dude is looking through a scope and he's looking off 800 yards and the thing stops and turns around and looks at him for a long oh, wow. time. Like it knows oh, wow. it's being looked at. Or uh, many reports of these, these paranormal orbs coming in and this demonic activity and these, these strange animals coming in and all this weird stuff like what? And then they see a Bigfoot, like what is that? It's all witchcraft. All, right, that, you, all that falls into a witchcraft category. You said a word, and this is something that I find fascinating because I'm trying to pin this down, like in my mind and my, you know, even biblically. What is the avatar? How do they create those? Is that Nephilim? Is that a straight Nephilim? It is Nephilim. Think it's a cross between, it's a, yeah. it's a human Elohim hybrid. Yeah. So we always think of Elohim as, as, as the most high God. And sometimes God Almighty is called Elohim, but he is, the word Elohim just actually means in Hebrew, it means spiritual being. Yeah. So when God created, when God created the heavens and the earth, right? And whenever mm -hmm. he created the material universe, on the fourth day, which he didn't create the material universe, didn't create the sun and the moon and the stars until the 14th verse of Genesis, which is the fourth day. Come on. Okay. Man. So yeah. the first, second, and third day, he's creating that. He's creating within the heavenly realm. And then on the fourth, fifth, and sixth day, he's creating within the earthly realm. Yeah. Okay. Well, when he did that, he created his design has always been to have a heavenly family and have an earthly family. And right. he created. He created realms of what we in Western Christianity would call angels. We just, we, we fit it because, because we're Western and because we don't have an ancient Middle Eastern mindset, which means That's we right. miss, we miss Genesis six. We don't know what the council of the gods is in the book of Psalms. We don't know what these things are, the little G gods. And it literally yeah. means non-human entities that God Almighty created that are in the spirit realm. We put them all in the category of either angels or demons. And there's a whole lot more in the heavenly realm. Wow. Come on. That is not just angels or demons. As a matter of fact, the planet Earth is populated with millions of species, and I would bet you that there's a. That I would bet you that the population in the spirit is much bigger in the in in the heavenly realm than it is in the earthly realm. That sure and would we solve don't even a lot of things. That would sure solve a lot of things and interesting things, like even in the UFO conversation, even in mm -hmm. uh, things that appear, you know, things that appear to people demonically or whatever. You start to figure out yes. what is this. You know, we know it's all subject to the name of Jesus, but still. There's things that maybe they're a little bit playing off the page there. It's interesting. Make, make no mistake about it. Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the Elohim over all Elohim. And he is the creator. He, yes. Jesus Christ is the creating side of God. The Bible says all things are made by him. All things are made for him. And there's nothing that is made that he didn't make. That's what the word That's of God right. says. So right. these are these are not competitive gods. No. Okay. They they're not competitive gods at all. But they are yeah. spiritual beings or little G gods or sons of God, as they're known in the Old Testament. And uh, they uh, and I want to just tell you, the Lord didn't offer them redemption. He only offers us redemption. And yeah. now, as many as are led by the Spirit, He gives us power to be called the sons of sons God. Of God. And so they hate our guts. <laughs> that's awesome. I think too that's bad. I, it's too bad. We're made in his image and likeness. Troy, I think too, when aliens abduct, when they go down that road, I think they're trying to carry on that Nephilim tradition of capturing people, getting human DNA, mixing it up, getting yes. more and creating more avatars, experimenting yes. and doing this. And it's interdimensional. Have you heard the thing it about, is. and you, you could probably educate me on this, but have you heard about there's 10 dimensions, right? Or is it well beyond that? 
Have you? I have no idea how many dimensions there are. Let me. I'm going to draw something real quick. Is that okay? Okay. Let's I go. want to talk about. Yeah. Help me oh, draw. Let's do it, man. So real let's quick. Go. Here. So we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is just a little quantum physics discussions. But I don't, I am, I have enough with this to do an elevator discussion on it. But when I'm looking at this, we know we're in this dimension, Troy, right here. When God, who is a spirit, and they say this is the realm of the spirit, is beyond our capacity to understand dimensions, we're basically in this space over here. When things manifest from the realm of the spirit, they're bringing all these activities into the natural. And I believe this is also why we have things like, um, what is it, CERN? We've talked about that before. And you got these scientists that are over there and they're firing Hadron Collider particles at one another near the speed of light. When they collide, going around opposite directions, when these things collide, they observe them and they're beginning to say as they observe them with their eye, hey, look at this. And they're saying through math, not only can they find the origin of the universe, but they're beginning to open up these other spaces is what they're saying. And they're having voices or different entities talk to them and come into this natural world. I believe this could also be opening up portals, right, from the other realm that bring us UFO activity at a heightened level or other demonic plays, demonic stuff um demonic activity Troy. so when i'm looking at this type of thing i believe this is a lot of what we're dealing with so we know we're here and you were just telling me too that you've had encounters with a nefarious witch things other people astral projecting do you think maybe they're tapping into some of this either through science witchcraft and and going across this veil without god's permission that's what i think is going on here this is where we get a lot of that i hope that made some sense as i'm talking about these things it's or great. That, no, man, it's, okay. it's it's awesome. It's genius. Yeah. So yeah, so so past the veil of the third dimension, and when, and you know, whenever whenever God created uh, the heavens and the earth, it actually says it says in the in the beginning time God created the heavens, space, and the earth, matter, time, space, and matter. Okay, yeah. or actually the very first verse of the Bible out of thirty one thousand one hundred seventy one verses, it's the <laughs> first one. So we understand within those three dimensions, but we cannot see past that. Right. Yeah. Right. And then anything that's happening through free moral agency in this dimension, whether it's God or other things, we're bringing all these things that when you're talking about God's small G, all that, that really began to make me think about this scenario here. Yep. And, and I believe this is what we're doing. So I believe this is where we see Sasquatch come from. This is where mm -hmm. we see UFOs come from. This is where we see alien abduction activity come from. Yeah. Yep. Alien abduction is a, is yep. that. <laughs> I defy any human being. I defy any human being. Find me someone who has been abducted by aliens who called upon the name of Jesus. Woo! Come on, Troy. Because I want to tell you, there have been so many quote unquote alien abductions stopped when people cried, when people called upon the name of Jesus. Yes. And it's like, on. okay, so so that tells me what what camp all that is of. Okay. Even yeah. though I don't I don't know how all that works. I mean, how would I know how all that works? I just <laughs> yeah, know that I there are people either. There are people that are in top level government positions that literally partner with these little G gods or these these uh, demonic entities. Yes. And partner with them. They are doing a trans of technology of wisdom. Now they are paying a price for it. Yeah. Know this, yeah. they are paying a price for it. And a big part of that price probably has to do with the 185,000 children that are missing right now. And all these kids that we are actually rescuing all up and down the border that have been so ritually sexualized. And the reason why they don't kill all of these kids is because these high level sorcerers that are performing all these wow, ritualistic satanic things on all of Jeez. these little boys and girls that we rescued, they literally see those kids as, okay, since we've dedicated them at this level, that level, this level, that level, we can literally project into their bodies, just like a demon would project, astro project, and, and possess a human being. These sorcerers believe, and they practice this with human beings that they, are, that they have offered up in certain rituals. Wow, and it's sorry. like, okay, if, like, and, if, and if anybody's watching this and saying, well, I don't believe that, it's okay, but they believe it. They believe it. They believe it. And, you can question Troy, whatever you want to. Out of it. You know what? 
You, no, I don't th- question it. You're on the front lines. You're right there. You experience some of these things. You experience it on levels because you're putting an end. You're going and cutting off that wickedness they're doing with children and witches try to gain access to your influence in your life. And, and it's being stopped in the name of Jesus. So when people question, I got to tell you, I don't question it. You're right on the front line stopping that stuff. And I thank you, sir. Well, thank you, sir. No, it's real is, man. These kids, it's, it's not enough to rescue a kid anymore out of sexual slavery. You have to get them saved as quickly as you can. And then you're still going to have to work with them through lots and lots and lots of things because of the level of witchcraft that is involved in trafficking now. And yeah. I would like to just remain naive and not be a part of any of that. But I don't have that luxury because we actually rescue kids. Right. And it's like, what is this? I mean, when a witch shows up in your room and you turn on the light and he's shocked you can see him and then he disappears in front of you and you're like, whoa, what is that? Well, he didn't have an avatar to project into because I belong to the Lord wow. <laughs> and he didn't have that. So he showed up, he astro projected into my room and was putting a curse on me, showed up. I mean, it's like, and I know, I know for a lot of people, they're like, yeah, that pegs my cringe meter. Man, that ain't nothing compared to what's going on. <laughs> It ain't nothing. So, it ain't nothing. So, I don't know, man. I, I, I would say this. <laughs> you and I, you were, we were talking about, it's so funny. We're talking about the uh, the whole funny thing that goes with Bigfoot and all that kind of stuff. And I, <laughs> I, I, I would say this, that again, I think because like, I think that there are hybrids yeah. between spiritual beings and human beings that whole transhumanism it also between spiritual beings and the animal kingdom yes and the animal kingdom and that's that's and all of this all of this is about the seed war of genesis chapter three there will be a war i will place enmity between your seed and her seed and he he is gonna he's gonna slant he's gonna kill your head is what he's gonna do and you're gonna bruise his heel and, and there's true. literally a seed war. And um, this seed, it's when a, Jesus comes back, he's coming back for his. That's it. That's and what he's going to stop back all this. Affair. You know, my wife, Heather, she oh. ran into a gray alien. Um, we had one uh, show up. It appeared, this is a crazy story, but just really short. It began to speak to her from outside our home. And I was sleeping. I didn't experience this. She gets up, she walks out. And this thing was trying to get her to come outside and it was speaking. To, telepathically and she comes to the door our dogs yelping our dogs freaking out it's under the light outside on the deck up in the mountains where we were at at the time and it was trying to get her to come out there she took authority over it and it did flee but i find that these things do want as you were saying they needed a form of permission from people to agree with that so they can be swept away and these avatars such as little gray aliens what do they call them the mm-hmm. reptilians the yep. pleiadians the uh what are they, the nordics all these different people that they're talking about i believe is that same hybrid avatar you're talking about with a spirit of deception appearing isn't it the government that just did an alien interview back in what the 60s and now they're trying to continue bringing that out in video they're showing it i do believe like you said it's a high price children's blood most likely but it's also the fact that they are being guided by these type of entities. There's a guy named, mm-hmm. what's his name? Phil, I'm trying to remember his last name, Phil something. Mm-hmm. But he was talking about how there was these underground tunnels and all that stuff. I believe mm-hmm. what he was talking yes. about was a collision with those entities. Phil and Snyder. one of the things that that guy says, one of the things that that guy says that, that you're talking about, we're talking about all these underground, all these underground tunnels. He says at a certain level, once you get there, um, there is, there's alien creatures or some kind of Nephilim giants that they're working with. It's working on this technology. And then this is what he says. You have to sign a government contract that says you will never speak the name of Jesus at a certain level or, or below. Like, well, why there you is go. that? Why is that? What's the problem? Troy, on this same thought, didn't, wasn't it? I, I haven't followed this down the bunny trail, but I want to hear what you think about this too, because this gets me going now. I'm thinking about what happened over in, it was Afghanistan or where they began to bomb over in Saudi Arabia. All the Kandahar. Place. Kandahar, the Kandahar. giant of Kandahar. Yeah. Do you think they I know bombed about those? Them, yeah. Or there's just so much going on there. Do you know any more than I know about that? I know they were doing things over there. That oh, I know all be. about that. Come on. The emails like Hillary was sending, all that stuff. <laughs> no, I know all about all that stuff. And let me tell you, giants are real. And like, well, I don't believe in it. Well, the word of God says giants are real. 
Yeah, okay, it does. And if you don't believe, and if you don't believe that an army can come up out of the earth that is reptilian and that is also insect and goes around killing everybody, then you don't believe the Book of Revelation. It's because true. 200 million, an army of 200 million come up out of the planet Earth. If you don't believe that there are porters, portals, then why does it say in the book of Revelation that uh, the key was given to go and to let out Apollyon out of the pit, which is the original Apollo, right? Like, yes. if you don't like, okay, we believe these things as far as our intellect belongs, but it doesn't actually belong in the real world we live in. No, it doesn't no. belong in modern Western Christianity. That's it. That's it. And they're gearing us up for it through psychology they're putting it in cinema they're putting it in writing all the way back to hg right. wells war of the worlds i thought yes. about this when orson wells read war of the worlds and like 20 percent of the population believed it that tells you the kind of mechanizing they're doing for us all the way up till today if yes, they appear sir. in the sky today if they appeared like independence today troy over a city and it was a projection like the spider-man movie they projected that over a city. I think people would immediately believe it. I think massive amounts of people would fall for it, go for it, and say that is God. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this up by ending this the way I started off. Okay, so we okay. – uh, and by the way, so I was saying – by the way, I, and I have to finish this up. Like, If you're going to ask Troy Brewer what is, what is Bigfoot and why is it <laughs> some people see him and he's in and he's out, I would say this. He is a hybrid between something animal and something demonic. He is interdimensional. He steps in and out, and he's used as an avatar for next level witchcraft. And that's what I would say. I think okay, that's a now, great answer. And I, and I want to just tell you, I like I go to northern Canada and I go bear hunting every year. And I went this last year with my boys and people always ask me, have you ever seen Bigfoot? And I say, no, I never have seen Bigfoot. I, I never have. I've had weird stuff happen in the woods, but I have weird stuff happen walking down the street. So it doesn't matter to me. But I haven't I haven't seen that. Like, what will you do? I'll kill him. I will oh, yeah. blast him between the eyes. I want to tell you, Nephilim seem to be vulnerable in the frontal lobe. And that's what I'm going for. Come and on. like, you can't, he might, he might be a good guy. No, 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 no. I'm not messing with him. So <laughs> on that, that's number one. Number two, I don't think he wants to show up on my turf. I don't think he no. does because I carry the presence of the Lord with me. That's and right. that matters with these paranormal things. Yes. And that matters with that. Finally, whenever, whenever Darren Stott asked me, okay, let's talk aliens. Hey, Pastor Troy. If aliens showed up at Washington, D.C. tomorrow, and if that happened on a Friday, what would an open door church service look like on Sunday morning? And would there be an open door church service? I said, oh, brother, you better believe there'd be a church service because <laughs> come on. And, and he said and he asked me, how does that work, man? And I said, it works like this. Number one. I'm not saying that we know, like if you think that all of humanity and all of creation is confined to the human race. Uh, I, why, why do you think that? I'm just going to just stop there and say that the issue is not if there's aliens or if there's not, or, or there's not aliens. The issue is, are they of God's camp or are they not of God's camp? That is the issue. That's an issue. Wow. That's a that is the statement. issue. And it's mm -hmm. the same way with everything. The issue is not, can somebody see something in the woods? If you say they can't, who do you think you are to tell somebody that? That's like, right. You don't know. You you were not there. No. So, so that's not the issue. The issue is, is it of God's camp and does it bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit? That is the issue. So, yes, I think that's well put. <laughs> I think Troy Brewer I think is wax eloquent. <laughs> Joseph, thank you for joining me on a weirdo edition of The Prophetic Life. <laughs> Brother, it you is and the I with coffee. a cup of coffee, you and I with a cup of coffee and a Red Bull, we can talk about anything. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, cup of coffee and a Red Bull. Man, I want to, there's so many things I want to talk to you about just in, just in trolling your stuff, man. We're like... Gosh, man, this guy talks about AI. This guy talks about transhumanism, which again, transhumanism is as it was in the days of Noah. That's mm. what that whole thing is about. Genesis 6 and then Genesis 9, Nimrod did it again, and he became a, a mighty man. 
a builder of cities. Hey, I'm I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the our our third window on here. Hey, Miss Connie, will you join us, please, ma'am? Oh yes, sir. Hey, let's see if we can do it. There you go. Okay. Well, that well that's kind of cool. Yeah. Hi, hi, I'm Joseph. How are you? Good to see you. Thank well, you, thank you. I'm you glad guys, to man. join in with y'all. Well, we're so happy you're here with us. And you know what, Miss Connie? So right on. So Nimrod became a mighty man, right? Yes. Right. He went through the transhuman ritualization of becoming Nephilim, mm. right? Yes. And then yeah. he actually changed his name from Nimrod to what? Starts mm. with a G. It's like a gibberine nope. or something? Gimelesh, right? In his name, Gimelesh. Oh, yeah. Gilgamesh. 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 Right the epic of right. Gilgamesh, yes. Which again, you know, in Freemasonry, you know, they had their builder mm -hmm. of cities, they got their building tools, and they got a big G right on the front of it, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. So it's all on. about it's all about Nephilim, it's all about Nimrod, it's all about yeah. the builder of cities. Herod was actually not even a Jew. Herod was an Edomite. Okay. Okay. The Bible, yeah. the Bible's he he was an Edomite. Okay. Well, what is what is an Edomite? It is what um Esau, Esau became. Esau became Edom. Became. He became wow. Edom. And his descendants are not called Esauites. His descendants are called Edomites. So when the Bible says he was big and giant and he was a hunter, again, Nimrod, the mighty hunter, he was a hunter of men. Yes. And when Jacob was scared of him, he had good reason to be scared of him. He was so hairy. Thank you very wow. much. He was so hairy that Jacob literally fooled his dad by putting on sheepskin, like wool. I mean, he was becoming something. Troy, that is remarkable information. <laughs> Truly, I've not thought of that before. And that then, is really okay, strong. So, so what was, and then, and then what was Herod? Herod was a, and by the way, they always kill babies. They always kill yeah. babies. They always defile bloodlines. Yep. They always build cities. They're always big time uh, city builders. They always build things and they always build temples or they, they build astrological structures is what they do. And they say the top shall be as the heavens and wow. they worship other gods. And they always dominate a, they always a humankind. Dominate. Well, Herod, Herod was an Edomite. He had Nephilim gene in him. And Herod was a builder of cities. He yep. was a slayer of children, and he was the enemy of Jesus. He was an antichrist. Yes, he was. Wow, well, man! It's all it's all a big seed war, man. Mm -hmm. It's a big seed war, and it's trying to stop again what's happening. I believe that we're confronted with that same spirit in our culture, as as we know, and that's what's trying to get us all to be for lack of a better word, perverted in our DNA, perverted to the point that we are no longer what God created us to be. You said a great point earlier, Troy, where we're suddenly we're no longer human. It's trying to get us where people are no longer human and therefore yep. different rules apply. That's correct. I mean, the, the deal of the mark of the beast is even though the gospel is being preached on the planet uh -huh. Earth during that time, Right. We know the mm -hmm. 144,000. We know the, the the two witnesses. But if you receive the mark of the beast, you cannot be saved. Like, OK, if the gospel is being preached and you can't be saved. And if and if you're saved by faith, yes. why in the world? Could you, what is that all about? What, dude? What would I a mark tell you, with that? you yeah. have a different seed. Mm -hmm. You have you're a different, different seed. You've changed. Your DNA has been changed. Wow. Yeah, man. And I was wow. I would. I, I would also say this too, and I'm, I'm man, dude, we got to close. I'm sorry to be taking so much of your time, Joseph. You're so oh, awesome. I love this, Troy. You're awesome. But, but I would also say this, my friend. When you see, I, I don't come from the Jewish people. I am straight up, uh, whatever it is, from the Viking hordes and <laughs> all of those people. And like, you know, those are unredeemed people that worshiped other gods. Right. Those are under, and you can't tell me that there's not a Nephilim gene in that somewhere somehow. Is there hope yeah. for me? Yes. One is no longer a Jew outwardly. Now one is a Jew inwardly. Come on. And you must be born again. Yes. 
You must be born yeah. again. So whenever, so whenever, whenever it says that in the book of Matthew, where it gives, okay, there are 14 generations from, from Abraham to David, 14 generations from David to the carrying away of Babylon and 14 generations from the carrying away of Babylon unto Jesus, the Messiah. Right. And then in the, and then in the book of Luke, it starts at Adam and it goes all the way to Jesus. And Jesus is a 77th generation. It's like, okay, we kept the promise of the bloodline from Adam all the way to Jesus. But here's the deal. When Jesus got saved, I'm sorry, when Jesus resurrected mm -hmm. from the dead, yes. he turned to his disciples and said, I'm not just here for the bloodline of Israel. I want wow. you to go to all the world and I want all those kingdoms back. That's strong. Go. That is strong. And now... And now he and now, man, our Jewish brothers and sisters, because they carried the seed. Now, you know what the seed and, 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 and brother uh, Paul talks about it and he talks about, listen, we are of that seed now by faith. Yes. And these jokers never imagined that Jesus would resurrect from the dead and come after us and make us part of his kingdom and replace them with us. Man. That is so strong that that takes it to a whole nother level because that means now not only do we have the spirit of Christ in us, but we have a dominant force against that Nephilim spirit. It's not That's just right. against saving people. We're, we're pushing back territory that way as like the real. And now we bring the kingdom. We bring the kingdom. Come on, Troy. And it's all about the kingdom. Yeah. And <laughs> I mean, that's what it's about. <laughs> there's, anyway, yeah, there's the gospel, I gotta let you go. Oh, bro, I love you. Thank you for this. I've enjoyed being with you. Oh, uh, this was wild. Thank you so much. Hey, listen, will you promise to come back on? Oh, it'd be my yes, great I honor, Troy. I enjoy being about. with you very much. Love you and love your ministry. <laughs> the next time, the next time you come on, we're going to talk about King Saul. Let's go. Okay. Yeah, we'll go. And here's what I want to tell you about King Saul. Okay, yeah. I'm just going to, hey, hey, Connie, you want to help me out on this? You want to help me out? So me and Connie talk about this stuff all the time. <laughs> all right. King Saul is a yeah. descendant of who? Do you know who he's a descendant of? Um, I don't know that I can tell you that. Uh, we're actually, we'll have to look up his bloodline. Yeah, because I... <laughs> but one of his guys, it's like his 5G grandfather or maybe 4G grandfather. Okay. One of those guys is of the bloodline of the Nephilim. Mm -hmm. That's why Saul is okay. taller than the rest of them. He's head and shoulders above everybody else, and he doesn't fight the giant. He doesn't fight it. And he doesn't kill the Amalekites, which are also Nephilim. Troy Brewer. And he serves other gods, and God does not speak to him. Yes. He's Nephilim. He's 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 on the wrong side of the seed war. You're like, well, yeah. wait a minute. Didn't God appoint him? Yes. And you know yeah. what he says? So here's the deal on that. Here's the deal on that. It says in the book of uh, not Malachi, but uh, um, let me think of it. He said, and I'll, I'll, I'll find the scripture. He said this. I chose Saul in yeah. my anger and I destroyed him in my wrath. In my anger and in my Hosea wrath. Hosea 13. Hosea 13. He's like, you guys wanted a king that served yep. other gods, and I gave you one. Okay. My goodness. And he was Nephilim. And I'm telling Nephilim. you, he was. I, and and I, he has I no see. bloodline after him. None of his sons ever became a king again. No, none of his. He has no dynasty whatsoever. And that's wow. because of the seed war. All wow. right, look, I got to let you go, bro. Bro, I, I love you. you go. This is great conversation. I love you, man. I love you, man. I'm proud of you. Hey, listen, guys, join him. And I'm putting all the information up right here. Find Joseph Z. Look at his stuff. He's a great guy. He's a good friend of mine. I love him so much. Can't endorse him enough. Friends, if you're watching this and go, I love this stuff, join us. It's called The Prophetic Life. And you can find it at odx.tv. For more information or for prayer, or if you need a friend, or if you want to know about our resources, or you want to come to our New Beginnings Prophetic Conference, or you want to know about how do we rescue kids, 
kids? How many kids have we rescued? What is that all about? You can also call us. Call 877-413-0888. Again, it's 877-413-0888. That's my hotline. There's a room right over here. I got a bunch of ladies working in it, and we're standing by. You can also find me at odx.tv, or you can find me at troybrewer.com. I'm going to turn this over to Miss Connie. Oh my gosh, that was such an awesome conversation. I love when Pastor Troy has guests that we can jump into these topics with. It's so much fun, so much fun. Um, thank y'all so much for joining us. And again, I wanna reiterate that if you want to ask about upcoming events, if you wanna ask about how you can become a Prophetic Life member or how you can check out anything on ODX.TV, you can go directly there, ODX.TV, or you can call us at 877-413-0888. Remember, you can also email us at support at odx.tv. I want to remind everyone that, hey, our New Beginnings Conference is coming up. So please, 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 please grab tickets if you haven't already. And along with our New Beginnings Conference, we have our amazing prophetic calendars that are available. They're no longer pre-ordered. They are here now. So if you order, you will be getting them soon, probably within the week. Um, it is based on our one is based on our calendar, the midnight hour, and the other is based. Or I'm sorry, one is based on our conference for New Beginnings 2024, and it follows more closely with the Gregorian calendar. And then we have our the year of the open door calendar, and that's based more on the five seven eight four Jewish year. So please, guys, if you are interested, you can call us at 877-413-0888 or go directly to odx.tv to order. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for joining us. Remember, if you're interested in these types of topics and these types of discussions, you can please join Prophetic Life. Thank you for joining us. We love you. We're grateful for you. And again, we call you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, and highly favored of the Lord. Bye, y'all.